Hi everyone, this is Dee. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been online like this, on YouTube like this. Um, I wanted to come on today to discuss a video uploaded to YouTube by commentator hashtag TV about why we allegedly haven't seen Tosh K go live, her protege, and also the law. We're going to take a quick moment and say a brief prayer before the sewer monsters lurking around YouTube looking for people to harass, scam, and destroy get out and start stirring up as much mess as possible like they normally do. So, please Lord, please help me speak the truth regardless of what these demons do or say. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> All right, so the reason I've decided to bring this information to you in this format is because there are people out there trying to get other people's channels and videos taken down. This rant is really, it's, it's really about exposing these actions of the YouTube cult by sharing information with viewers about what can and cannot be done and what should and what should not be done. Once again, I decided to comment on some activity I've witnessed in the YouTube universe to help people understand that there are laws and just how you don't see, just because you don't see anything happening right away, that doesn't mean that there's not anything going on behind closed doors. Now, for those of you who are drunk off the Unwind with Tasha K wine, those of you on the verge of drinking the poison toxic juice. Those of you fooling around with Miss Seven Hot Messes, Six Gold Teeth, Five Pinky Rings, Four Trolls a Trolling, Three Cult Members Strolling, Two Channels Having, One Brain Cell Left. Y'all might want to grab all of your silly little comments and run back to your cult leader. Because honey, it's about to get real over here. <clears throat> As always... No apologies will be offered because my entire purpose for my rant is to speak my piece, tell the truth, and expose the mess I see on YouTube. Now here are some facts. There are some YouTube deceivers out there. And some of those YouTube deceivers have protégés. <laughs> uh, when I think of YouTube deceiver, one person comes to mind, of course, Tasha K and her protégé, 7up. You guys need to be careful because being black while chasing success, it's important not to forget the golden rule. Look at Bill Cosby. Look at R. Kelly. And I suspect pretty soon, look at Wendy Williams. Tasha Kay, you are a black woman. You could, you could, you could well have been a potential shoe filler for Wendy Williams but you chose to ditch your credibility and sink into lies and deceit. As a result, there are so many people out there in the black community and in other communities who will never rock with you again, period. Your credibility is shot. Even though Wendy Williams has been known for being extra, extra, extra messy, she is very credible. There are some people out there who will follow your mess because you are very entertaining. But they will feel betrayed when they come to, to the realization that you are not trustworthy. And when they find out, you have been lying to them. <clears throat> now let's get to the biggest portion of my talk today, my rant today. Legality. No talk show is going to take the chance that a person might get on their platform and start lying about celebrities or everyday people. One of the things that each YouTuber should keep in mind is we need to take a page out of the politician's playbook. Those of you who are trying to go on to bigger and better things. The politic these people, lawyers, uh, commentators, anchors, just different people out there in the world. They go on to Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, NBC, and audition for whatever position they want. They pick a side and stick to those talking points. 
and will not budge because they know the jobs they are aiming for can roll back the footage and see them holding their own against those who believe differently. When you choose to lie, no company is going to waste their money or, on, or their time on you and then worry about potential lawsuits that could still creep up on you from some stuff you started six months ago. And that's to you, Tasha K. Just because a person, just because we don't see actions going on on YouTube, it doesn't mean that nobody's filed a lawsuit against you. If a person wanted to file a lawsuit against Tasha K., and she broke a law, say, for instance, or not just Tosh K, anybody, anybody on YouTube. If a person wanted to file a lawsuit against you, that person has to do so before the statute of limitations runs out. Now, that could be a year. It could be two years. It all depends on what state you live in. Now, typically, when a person files a lawsuit, the first thing they have to do is figure out what jurisdiction they need to file that lawsuit in. Jurisdiction has to do with the court that can hear your case. If you file a petition, a claim, a cause in the wrong jurisdiction, they will throw it out because you're filing it in the wrong place. So in order to know where to file something, you have to understand the court system for that state and you have to understand under what law it is that you're filing a petition, a claim, or a cause. Now, first, before I go any further, this is my disclosure. You should always seek the advice of an attorney for any and all legal matters. I am a student of law. I am a paralegal studies student and therefore I cannot represent anyone. I must point out that I know how to read, research, and break down the law. I have an understanding of the federal and state court systems. I also know how to create court documents which are specific to a specific jurisdiction where those documents must be filed. With that being said, any information I share is purely intercational. Yes, I said hashtag intercational. Or for entertainment purposes on an educational level. <laughs> I am in no way offering legal advice to anyone. If you need legal assistance, please seek out an attorney. Thank you. Second, I would like to say that Tasha Kay and others who live in Georgia could potentially have a problem, in my opinion, if they are defaming or slandering people. When I type in the question looking for the actual laws governing defamation slash slander in the state of Georgia, it pops up very quickly. That typically means that so many people have been searching for this information. Google has tallied up all of those searches and determined that this is something that people want to see. And the way that Google operates, the more you look for something, the quicker you can access it the next time it's entered into their search engine. So if you're defaming people, slandering people, you may want to be careful in the state of Georgia because there are those out there looking for these laws and they're not just looking for no reason. Not Often when people are searching laws, Often they're actual people in the legal community because they do have access to their own. Uh, they have access to their own legal libraries online. Yeah, they have the books. They have the books because it's always good practice to have the legal books or the annals that contain the laws in them and the ledgers for years. And, you know, they have to be updated periodically. But... There are legal systems online such as LexisNexis that is available for legal students, people who, people who are 
um, legal assistants, people who are paralegals, people who are um, lawyers, attorneys, those who work in a legal capacity, even law enforcement, they have the ability to go online to um, websites that are only open to certain people, such as LexisNexis, and research the law. So let me explain this to you. If people are looking for a specific law a lot and it's populating quickly on Google, that lets me know that people are looking for that law a lot. So those of you in Georgia, <laughs> you might want to be careful. My second talking point is this. I would like to say that Tasha K and others who live in Georgia should think, or not my second talking point, I'm sorry, my, not my second talking point, my third talking point. Now, the statute of limitations for a defamation claim in the state of Georgia is one year or 365 days from the day that the defamation occurred. If you make one video on September 29, 2018, now this is an example. This is truly an example. I just pulled a, a, a date out of my memory banks. If you make a video on September 29, 2018, and a person decides to go into the court, file a petition or a case with the court system stating that you defamed them. They filed the correct paperwork and the correct jurisdiction and the correct court and state that you defamed them. If a person were to do all these things, they have exactly 365 days to file that claim with that correct court. Now, there's something that you have to keep in mind. That, that is, they must file the claim before the close of business day, either on September 27th. Now, I'm using September 27th of 2019 or September the 30th of 2019, depending on how the court calculates holidays and weekends in their schedule. That structure uh, the structure of the of the Georgia court system is as follows. Trial courts of limited jurisdiction. Now you have several trial courts. You actually have six trial courts. That's your magistrate court, your probate court, your juvenile court, your state court, your municipal court, and your superior court. In the magistrate court, magistrate courts are county courts that issue warrants, hear minor criminal offenses and civil claims involving amounts of $15,000 or less. There is no jury and you most likely will represent yourself, etc. Now, I'm saying etc. because there's more information that you need to go research yourself or you need to get a lawyer to help you better understand. Probate courts have original jurisdiction in the probate of wills and administration of descendants or decedents that someone who's passed away estates is designated to the probate court of each county probate judges are also authorized to order involuntary hospitalizations of an incapacitated adult or other individual and to appoint a legal guardian to handle the affairs of certain specified individuals probate courts issue marriage licenses and licenses to carry firearms, etc. Juvenile courts. Juvenile courts handle all cases involving deprived and neglected children under 18 years of age, delinquent and unruly offenses committed by children under 17 years of age, and traffic violations committed by juveniles. The juvenile courts also hear cases involving consent to marriage for minors, enlistment of minors into the military, and procedures for return of a runaway child resident who is taken into custody in another state, etc. State courts. State courts exercise limited jurisdiction within one county. These judges hear misdemeanors, including traffic violations, issue search warrants, and arrest warrants, hold preliminary hearings in criminal cases, and try civil matters. Now, a defamation case is a civil matter. It is something that will go through the civil court. 
These matters handled at the state court level are not reserved exclusively for the superior courts. In other words, this is a court that's higher than that state court, etc. Municipal court. Cities and towns in Georgia establish municipal courts to handle traffic offenses, local ordinance violations, conduct preliminary hearings, issue warrants, and in some instances hear misdemeanor shoplifting and possession of marijuana cases, etc. Superior Court is the last trial court level in the state of Georgia. So you have six levels of trial court. Superior Court is going to be the last. It has its own specific jurisdiction and it handles cases that cannot it can handle cases from other courts, but other courts most likely may not be able to handle cases from the Superior Court. The Superior Court exercises both civil and criminal jurisdiction. Superior Court judges provide over all felony trials. Whenever it says all, that means that other courts are not going to be able to handle those trials. Have exclusive jurisdiction over divorces and may correct errors made by limited jurisdiction courts. In other words, the courts that are beneath it, etc. Now, when it comes to these levels of courts, you really must seek out an attorney if you don't have prior knowledge of the court system because it can be tricky if you don't. See, I know how to go in and read the laws to determine exactly you know, each court, the courts in, in the state of Texas, they have rules about how things are done in their courts. So in order for me to file a petition within a court in the state of Texas, I have to go in, I have to find the rules, I have to read those rules. These are not laws, but they're the rules as a pl that, that are applicable to that particular court. Because if you don't follow those rules, that judge will not hear your case. They want you to be, they want you to line up as if you are an attorney. <laughs> you have to present your information as if you are an attorney. And they're not going to accept the fact that you don't know. So before you go in there, you have to do a lot of homework, not a little. There is no little homework when it comes to legal matters. You have to research laws. You have to research precedents. You have to find cases just like your cases that went through that same court that won. So you can point back to that case and say, hey, this case is just like my case and this case won. Not only that, you have to cite the case correctly you can't just point to the case you have to present that case in a language that the judge will understand so there is a lot of work to be done when you're dealing with courts and judges judges really do care you know some of them do care about what's going on in the community but they have so many cases and so many times so little time to deal with your problem so that's the reason why I Put the disclosure up first. It's best to seek a, the assistance of a legal attorney because there are so many things that that, that, attorney, that attorney has a team that they can get things done quickly. You and I, on the, or I'm not going to say I because I've actually filed several different documents on federal and state and local levels. So I know how to do this, but I can tell you it took me months to pull the paperwork together. It, it does not, it doesn't happen, happen overnight because if you leave out, if a, if a, if a court says that it requires you to file papers one through 52 and you leave out paper 50 and you include papers 49 and 48, which they don't need from you. So you could have taken those out, but you must have paper 50 and you don't provide that paper 50. And I'm just using an example. They will not accept the whole package. You'll have to start all over. Every single, every single claim petition that is submitted to a court has a time frame. If you don't submit the correct paperwork in the correct time frame, you're going to lose your case. Nine times out of ten. Unless that, and, the, the, and the judge has to go by the law 
And if the law says that you have to submit it by a certain time frame, and then that judge turns around and give you more time for no valid reason, then that case can go up to appellate. They could be appealed because that judge is favoring you. So judges are, most judges are not going to do that. They're not going to favor you. They're going to expect you to do your research and do your homework. Because if you don't, if you don't understand how the court system work, that's the reason why people keep saying, go to an attorney. Go to an attorney. Go to an attorney. They went to school for it for years. Most in the state of Texas, in order to even go into law school, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Your bachelor's degree has to be kind of leaning in the direction of law. It doesn't have to be in law, but it needs to be something that can lean in the direction of law. Then you have to be referred. You have to literally get a referral to go into law school. And then you have to go to school for another, I believe, four years to get your license to, in order to sit and take the test to get the license to be an attorney. So it's not easy. These people study for a long time. Once they get through studying, they even have to go sit, listen to cases. They have to put together case briefs. They have so much stuff that they have to do before they ever get a chance to represent a client. So I'm sharing this information because a lot of people are stating a lot of completely false information on the Internet. And I don't want to see someone get messed up because you're listening to a person who doesn't know the first thing about what they're talking about. I can tell you this from experience. If you don't have a background in law, seek help from a lawyer. Seek help from a legal advocate. There are people out there who can help guide you in the right direction. They can't represent you in court, but they can guide you in the right direction so you can do what you need to do. But you, if you don't know about the law yourself, look for help. Don't just sit there and let your time pass by and then think to yourself, man, I should have done something. The last two courts that I want to talk about are courts of review. These courts do not have trials. They don't hear witnesses. There are no uh, juries. These courts simply look at what the other courts did to make sure that they followed the law. And that's it. The first court is the Court of Appeals of Georgia. The Court of Appeals is the is the court of first review for many civil and criminal cases heard by trial courts. Those were those six courts that I just talked about, the trial courts. The purpose of such a review is to correct legal errors or errors of law made at the trial level, not to alter jury verdicts or the outcome of bench trials, etc. These courts Listen to your, they actually read the case law, the paperwork, because there's so much paperwork that accumulates during a trial. They read that paperwork and they make a decision based on the paperwork that is, and that is meticulously documented. I mean, word for word, verbatim, everything that's said in trial, everything that's done in trial, there is someone sitting over there typing that stenographer and she is, I mean, word for she's not, she or he is not missing a word. That way, if that court, if that case gets appealed, they're just going to take the case briefs. And, and that's another legal term. I'm not going to go into it because it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> they're going to take all of the communications that happen in that court. They're going to take it to that court of appeals of Georgia. They're going to sit there and they're going to go through all that paperwork to see if every, every procedure, every rule, everything was followed according to Georgia law. And if they see that there was an error made, then they will make, an, make a decision on whether that case can be appealed or not. Now, the Supreme Court of Georgia is the highest court in the state of Georgia. The Supreme Court of Georgia is kind of like the Supreme Court of the United States. The Supreme Court of Georgia hears all the lower court cases, and that includes the Court of Appeals of Georgia. They hear those cases as well. And then they make a final decision. 
The Supreme Court, the state's highest court, reviews decisions made in civil and criminal cases by a trial court judge or by the Court of Appeals. This also this court also rules on questions involving the constitutionality of state statutes. In other words, if there is a rule, a law, an ordinance, a statute, something that a, a person or the state legislature voted on and decided to make a law in the state of Georgia. And somebody says, you know what, wait a minute, this law is, it goes against the constitution. The Constitution is the highest law of the whole United States. So you cannot make a law in a state that says being in a homosexual relationship is illegal because it has already been decided by the Supreme Court that it is not illegal. So any state that tries to make a law to infringe upon the rights of a person that goes against the Constitution, then that state is breaking the federal laws. And you can bring that case to trial at the Supreme Court level, and they can look at it. They can You can bring that question of law, or we couldn't. You would have to go through a lawyer because... They don't hear, they don't, they're not going to hear testimonies. So there's no trial. It's basically, basically just questions go before a panel of judges. That panel of judges decides whether that question is right, whether the lower courts below it correctly apply the law or whether the law itself is wrong and there needs to be some changes. That's all they do in the Supreme Courts, and that's all over the United States. So, there and, and et cetera, I'm going to say et cetera because there's so much more to each court, and I can't cover all of it because this would be a three-hour, uh, this would be a three-hour video. So, I'm just giving you the meat and potatoes. I'm also, when I'm telling you, when I say et cetera, this is because there is so much more important information regarding each of these courts. I suggest you go to the state website and better familiarize yourself with each court and service they provide. That information will be posted in the comments section below the link to the Georgia uh, the municipal.georgiacourts.gov. That information will be posted in my comment section below. I believe that everyone should know the law. You should understand the law because how can you protect yourself as a citizen of the United States of America if you don't even know how to protect yourself? Please keep in mind, it is against the law to file a case in court with false intentions. Please remember that. If you're angry with someone and they piss you off and you want to go file a, a case against them, think about it because if you get caught, that is considered perjury. You're, if you go before a judge and you lie on somebody, that's perjury. It is also illegal to lie in court. So be careful with that. You don't want to just jump on the bandwagon of somebody else doing what they're doing and end up getting yourself caught up. I'm just I'm just sharing the truth with you because if nobody shared the truth with truth with some people, they'll never know. Now, I'm going to briefly cover the Georgia defamation law and I'm just going to give the statutes and you'll have to do the research yourself because as I stated before, I'm not an attorney and I can't advise anybody of anything, but I can point you in the right direction so you can find the help you need for yourself. Georgia Defamation Overview. Georgia law determines defamation as an unprivileged, false, and defamatory statement concerning the plaintiff. That's the person who files a petition, a case um, in court where the defendant was at least negligent in making the statement and caused harm to the plaintiff. See Mathis v. Cannon as well as 92 OCGA statute 51-5-1 Georgia code statute 51-5-1 states letter a libel is a false and malicious defamation of another 
expressed in print, writing, pictures, or signs, tending to injure the reputation of the person and exposing him to public hatred, contempt, or ridicule. Now listen to this again. Libel is a false and malicious defamation of another. If you reveal something about someone and it is the truth, that's not false. So that person has not committed li a liability towards you. They're not liable. Defamation has nothing to do with revealing truth. It does have everything to do with lying on someone. And that lie resulting in something bad happening to that person, causing them to lose something or to lose money or to be separated from something, separated from an opportunity. That's what liable and defamation, that's the whole center of it. It means that someone lied on you and that lie resulted in you losing something. Publication is necessary to recover damages in liable in for liable in Georgia. Publication can be. Now think about publication. When you publish something, publication means that you went out and told everybody about it. Whether it be in a magazine, newspaper, on the internet, on TV, or a billboard on the side of the road. That's publication. When the when 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 the community when people who didn't know anything about it before become aware of information that is false and damaging, then you've committed defamation or libel. You see what I'm saying? It, it has nothing to do with something that is exposed that is the truth. Now, if a person has some type of communicable disease and you expose that information without that person's permission. There are laws that cover that, but that is not defamation. Defamation, there must be a lie told. There must be a lie told. There must always be a lie told in order for it to be a defamation. Under Georgia defamation law, statements about the public in general are not actionable. Moreover, it is the responsibility of slander and libel plaintiffs to prove that the statements under review are about them. Under Georgia law, a private person can sue another person without having to prove actual malice. Private persons only need to demonstrate that the defendant was negligent when communicating the defamatory statement to a third party. In other words, communicating the lie to a third party. So the most important thing to remember is there must be a lie. It has to be a lie and the lie must cause you damage. If the lie doesn't cause you damage, if the lie doesn't cause you damage, and if it's not a lie, then you probably won't fall under this law. Now, I say probably because it's always left up to the judge to make the determination if he's even going to hear the case and how it applies to the law, which is the reason why it is always essential to find an attorney who will represent you. Because a, an attorney has already tried other cases that are similar to yours. And a rule of thumb is nine times out of ten, if an attorney says no, it's because they don't feel like they're going to win. And if they don't think they're going to win, they're not even going to waste your time or your money trying to go to court and argue something because that lose goes against their record. They're not going to throw you under the bus if something actually did happen. But what they'll do is they'll apply your situation to the law to see if there's a chance that you will win. And if you don't, they don't see you winning, they're not going to waste your time or theirs or your money. I know people think that attorneys are money hungry and some of them are, but not all attorneys are money hungry. Some attorneys actually like their reputation and they want to keep a good, clean reputation. They want people to know that when they come and be represent, go and be represented by that attorney, that they're going to win. They want to come in knowing that they can win. And if they have a lot of loses because they accepted a case that was 100% not going to win, that makes their record look bad. It's just like if a if it's just like it's just like a football player. Their stats matter. A football player's stats matter. 
People are always looking at the statistics of any athlete. An attorney is the same way. His statistics matter because his or her, because if their statistics are low, when you look for an attorney, do you want an attorney that is always winning or somebody that lose the majority of the time? Who wants to waste their money on somebody that may lose? So you got to think about all these things before you hop online, you gang up with these people, these cults, and you decide, oh, I'm going to slander somebody. I'm going to defame them. I'm going to talk about them and say a bunch of lies and fictitious stuff. I'm going to call their job. I'm going to harass them. I'm going to do all this stuff. Because if you decide to do that, there are laws out there for you. And if somebody's doing that to you, there are laws out there for them. If you would like any further information about the defamation laws in the state of Georgia, please seek the advice of an attorney. Or you can go to the website which first came up when I did my Google search for the Georgia defamation law. I will list the attorney's website that posted this information. Now keep in mind, I don't live in Georgia. When I, as a student, um, in my legal studies course, we were required to look up cases in other states and see how their laws compare to ours. We don't we didn't just focus on Texas We because a lot of the students were from all over the United States. So we had to look up cases all over the United States and we had to look up the laws and how the laws were applied in those different states. Anyone who has that kind of background can do that kind of work. So. You know, my suggestion to you is that you look for someone who has the background that can help you find the right answer. But keep in mind, if you're the person who's perpetrating these things, breaking these laws, you're going to strike out eventually because you're going to eventually run across someone like me who knows better. <laughs> and when you run across me, someone who knows better. I'm not going to let it slide. I believe in the law and I believe that the law should be followed, period. Point blank, exclamation point. I'll let a person slide. I'll warn them. I'll let them know, hey, I'm not the one for that. You might want to move along. And if that person keep going, <laughs> I got it for them all day long. Um, as I stated before, I don't live in Georgia. I have not been contacted by this law firm to promote them. I don't even know who they are. I did a Google search for Georgia defamation law and this law office popped up and because it popped up, it means to me that apparently a lot of people have been contacting them. And so, um, I feel that people should know the truth since, uh, so many YouTube commentators are choosing to defame others. And basically I'm just providing a public service today. I just want to help out as much as I can. In conclusion, we not only have a responsibility to follow the rules established by YouTube. When commentators break those rules, they should be held accountable. Not one person has the right to go online, defame, harass, and stalk anyone else. Even if you don't physically hurt someone, the law may often make you just as guilty if you participate on any level with defaming, harassing, or stalking someone. It depends on what state you live in and how lenient they are when it comes to defamation, harassment, and stalking. Tasha K and other YouTube commentators have sullied their names and likeness by lying and or allegedly threatening people. Keep in mind, we don't know who the person is behind these computers. We have no idea if a person is a law enforcement agent or if a person has the ability to seek recompense if someone crosses the legal limitations. That's all I have for today. Black community, we can all win if people would stop giving in to the self-destructive ways of those who bully, defame, harass, stalk, and or threaten others on YouTube or anywhere, anywhere else. I will share more legal intercational, hashtag intercational, information for those who have an ear to hear and a heart and mind to process the truth. This is Black Conspiracy TV, BAD TV, 
Thanks for stopping by. Have a blessed and safe week. And remember, black people, please keep your eyes open and your ears sharp. See you guys later. Bye.